So I want to talk a little bit about LPS. It stands for lipopolysaccharide. So this is a molecule that makes up the outside of a bacteria, gram-negative bacteria in your body. Okay? Whenever your gut gets out of whack, these bacteria can escape your digestive system and get into your blood supply. Whenever your gut gets damaged and you know, ravaged by antibiotics, you know, these, these bacteria can overgrow and escape into your body. And they cause systemic inflammation. They make your joints hurt. They make your back hurt. Anywhere you have aches and pains, you can contribute that inflammation to some of this. It's not just those aches and pains where you're, you're having that inflammation. It's your whole body. Big deal, right? So a couple, you know, so you hurt a little bit more. So one of the things people don't think about is what about your brain? You might say, well, my brain doesn't hurt. And everyone could say that because there are no pain receptors on your brain. You cannot feel when your brain's inflamed. And inflammation of your brain can lead to a host of chronic diseases over time. So here, we're looking at Alzheimer's disease. We have tons of studies on LPS and its levels in the body correlating with chronic diseases. So here, you can see the healthy controls have a fairly low level of LPS, and the Alzheimer's have about four times, five times, as much LPS in their system. So the neurologists are looking at this, and they're saying, well, we have brain inflammation. You know, this is causing inflammation between our neurons and our brain, and it's causing these plaques to build up. And so the neurons can't communicate as well. So people are forgetful and all these things, and they say, well, it's hereditary, you know. We can't do anything about it. But the evidence nowadays says, yes, we can do something about it. How that, in, that inflammation from the gut is affecting the brain, and by correcting the gut, we can prevent this, these neurological disorders. So I want to look at a couple more disorders here. So ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, <coughs> also a neurological condition. So here it's, it's affecting our brain's ability to communicate to our muscles. And over time, our muscles will waste away. You can, all, you can see here, from the healthy controls, you can see early ALS, they have elevated levels, you know, about double. And then late ALS, they have about triple the level of LPS in their system than these healthy controls. And these healthy controls in these cases, that doesn't mean they're healthy. It just means they don't have the disease. So here, autism. You can see if we had to double the rates of LPS in autistic kids compared to healthy controls. How about depression? Do you think that affects many people here in the United States? So here, in this study, we're looking at LPS antibodies. So these are actual chemicals your body makes to fight off these bacteria that have escaped into your system. So you can see the controls have zero. And those with major depression are showing many more. So you might be thinking, why? how is it that gut inflammation can cause depression? Has anyone ever heard of uh, serotonin? Yeah? So serotonin is it's a happiness neurotransmitter. OK? 90% of the serotonin in your body is made right here in your gut. And when your gut's out of whack, your body can't produce the serotonin to make you feel well, to give you that feeling of well-being. So it's so much more. This microbiome, it affects so much more than just your gut. You know, it affects your brain in so many ways. 